May 18th, 2019. Hello, everybody. Doc Hydra here. Listen, I'm doing this video because I wanted to go over something that a lot of individuals are really having a hard time with. Now, my channel specifically is not for the purpose of teaching Pump 101 and bare bones basic friction loss calculations. However, I've noticed a trend over the last several years that people move their way up into the engineer position and they don't understand the prerequisite of S211 portable pumps and water use which is the basic of how to calculate friction loss. That is something that I consider a failure on the past instructors for not properly delivering the correct methods on how to do that because now they're coming into my class and they don't they don't know what to do. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and show a couple of aspects to this and one of those that I'm going to do is going to deal with something like a progressive hose lay. There's a couple of things here that tar that we look at here. Let's forget about for the moment all this stuff down below and up here. Let's look at how this is. You've got your engine here. You've got a single line of trunk that comes with the first Y and then it splits off to a one inch goes to a, another section another y another uh, lateral and then the third lateral they're all the same tip so the problem that i'm looking at with this is people have not been properly taught on how to add all of these up and then what to count or what not to count that is really disturbing to me because it's really th this is like the first stuff that you're supposed to learn so let me go over it uh for whatever reasons you weren't taught let me go over this um you always start over here at the farthest lateral or what in the structure world talks about is you pump to the highest discharge pressure and that's most notably always going to be the farthest nozzle away from the pump um, I say most notably because that's the most common. You could have something that this nozzle is actually farther away, but let's say it's farther away in terms of horizontal distance, but it's down on the ground. Let's say that this nozzle here, the first nozzle, is closer to you, but now it goes up 150 feet. So it's going to have elevation plus the flow demands, whereas this other nozzle will not have. So depending on how much you've got, whatever it is that the demand is, you could actually be forced to pump to the first nozzle when yet the farthest one doesn't need so much so we'll just just keep that in mind that it's not a given absolute there are other things that could take place but for the most part in the wildland arena the most farthest nozzle whether it's a simple Jose or progressive is going to be most commonly referred to as the highest pump pressure required so you want to set up your calculations for that so Let's look at the first thing that you do. Whenever you're going to be looking at uh, hydraulics calculations for friction loss and determining flow, the first thing that you want to do is you've got to get a sketch made uh, to some point. You've got to find out how far away it is, where is your engine going to be at, or your pump. I say engine because that's the most common that we use. For me, it's a water tender, but um, you want to find out those distances. How close can you get to the source? And then how close or far away uh, from you is the water source? So there's several factors that you got to look at here. So with this here, uh, in this particular page here, we're looking at quarter inch tip for all three. We've got three nozzles. And what we've got is that we've got a lot of things that are spelled out for you because it's pretty much already done for you. But you got a quarter inch tip. So if you go to your cascade fire slide rule friction loss calculator you look up okay quarter inch tip now we know that a smooth bore and a quarter inch uh, that's a fraction we teach that hey if you see a, a fractional uh, nozzle assume it's a smooth bore and it's 50 psi period across the board so 50 psi you set it up you look at that and you find out hey that's showing like 13 gallons a minute so then what you do at this point, you go, okay, well, that's a quarter inch ship. So if that's 13 gallons a minute, then you go to this one, that's a quarter inch ship. So that's also 13 gallons a minute. And then the third one is the same tip size. So that's also 13 gallons a minute. So what you'll do at this point, 
is you'll take the flow in gallons per minute and you add them all up. How many nozzles? If they're all the same, you add them up. So in this case, 13, 26, 39. And you see that down here. 13, 26, 39. So that means that all three nozzles are going to be demanding 39 gallons a minute at a minimum from that engine. That's what you got to come up with. Now, another problem that I've seen is people will sit here and go, oh, well, I got 13 gallons a minute, and they'll assume that the gallons per minute is the nozzle pressure. You've got two different numbers here. A third problem that I've seen is that people will start adding nozzle pressures. You count one nozzle. Not all three, not two, just one in a progressive hose leg. So, 50 PSI is counted once, but you sum all of the nozzles to get the total flow required that the pump has to push from the engine up to the first wide, and that's right here. So, 39 gallons a minute. So you figure your friction loss for this, 39 gallons a minute right here. And then from here, you've got um, 13 PSI falls off of that 39, it drops to 26. So 13 gallons a minute is flowing out through here. Okay, and then now there's 26 gallons a minute remaining left in the line under pressure. And 13 peels off. And so now you got 13 gallons a minute here. Okay, so now, Here's another interesting point that I've noticed. A lot of people will sit here and they'll start adding up the friction loss for all the laterals. You don't do that. You count only one lateral. You count one nozzle, one lateral, regardless of how many laterals you have. And then you count the friction loss in the main trunk line all the way back. That's what you count friction loss on. You do not count the friction loss here. You do not count the friction loss here. You do not count the nozzle pressure here, and you do not count the nozzle pressure here. So you count this line right here is what you count. So that's that one. Now, if we go to another one, another people, they get kind of confused about this. They think, well, it's a Y. It's not a lateral. You treat this as a lateral. You pick one line, it doesn't matter which one, even if it's going uphill. Now, the only time that this would be different uh, and obvious is if this one Y went 50 feet uphill, well then now you've got like 25 PSI that you've got to add to that because it's going so vertical. But for the most part, if they're both even, they're on flat ground like shown here, let it go. Count, pick one line, doesn't matter which one, count the nozzle, count one line friction loss and then count the friction loss back but you add together the gallons per minute you do not add together the nozzle pressures and so that's basically it that's uh that's really all i wanted to go over is just say hey look this is the problem that i'm noticing most of the people that come to the engine academy usually do a pretty good job another one that i've seen that's a big assumption is that a lot of people will assume that oh well that's an inch and a half hose they default to max flow and they assign 13 psi per stick of hose for that friction loss is always based off of flow period regardless of the size for example if you look at a cascade fire slide rule um which i'm not sure let me see if i can pull that up here so here's an example if I sit here and I set my flow, I'm going to forget about the nozzle for a minute. So let me set my flow up for 60 gallons a minute. On an inch and a half, you can see that it's roughly 12 and a half, 12.6 PSI per stick of hose. So a lot of people would round to 13. That's, that's fine. That's not, that's four tenths of a pound. So that's not a lot of pressure, even if you had miles of hose. That's not that big of a, a, of a difference. However, let me show you something. Remember that. 12, let's just call it 12 and a half. Remember, 12 and a half. One and a half inch hose, 60 gallons a minute. Now let me show you something. We're going to jack this all the way up to about, oh, 250 p gallons a minute. Oh, we're, oh, this ain't working. Where is this at? about 12 and a half PSI per stick of hose or per 100 feet. So, 60, 250, 
the exact same friction loss. Two and a half inch versus inch and a half. It's based upon flow, not hose size. And that's all I wanted to cover today. So thank you, and we'll see you on the next one.